to hear about it. I they don't want to hear it. that America followed a policy of genocide. General Grant, one of our great heroes in America, called for the destruction, the annihilation of these people. But you can get the money. Why don't you? Why do you think you why can't you get the money? Why do you say I can get the money? I can't get Jeff Barbaco to agree to do this when I already gave them perhaps the equivalent of $10 million or $7 million or whatever it would be. You're not addressing yourself to that issue. That I've spent all this time, energy, and fret and foment about trying to get this picture presented properly, and I run into some country bumpkin producer who think it's a better idea and suits the interests of the, uh, the financial interests of the company to, uh, uh, you know. We asked executives at MGM to respond to Brando's allegations. They had nothing to say. Our interview with Marlon Brando continues in just a moment. Don't you ever talk that way to me. Pig, Polak, disgusting, vulgar, greasy. Those kind of words have been on your tongue and your sister's tongue is too much around here. Who do you think you are, a pair of queens? I just remember what Huey Long said, that every man's a king and I'm the king around here. And don't you forget it. I wasn't on the screen that much. Over a 40-year period, to make 30... 32 pictures or something, whatever it is, it's not very much. Why did you not work the last nine years? Because I find it odious, unpleasant. I find, I don't find acting satisfying. I'm much more interested in writing. And uh, I've sort of lived a, a contemplative life trying to figure out what it is that I would like to do. I never really knew, but I have, more satisfaction at writing and uh, doing other things, focusing on other things. Such as? I'm interested in everything. I don't think there's anything I'm not interested in. But uh, I've spent hours and hours watching ants go up and down my sink picking up the crumbs and finding out where they come from. They come in in the cold weather. And, uh... That, that's actually what you've been doing for nine years? Come on. No, I've been doing a lot of things. I've got nine children, don't forget. And, uh, that uh, takes quite a bit of doing. You just had a new little baby. Huh? You just had a new baby? Yeah. I have a little girl. Tell me about her? No. I don't see any. There's my answer to Jeff Barbaco again. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, I think it's, if there's anything that is perhaps unsettling to the stomach, it's to watch actors on television talk about their personal lives and you spend an hour uh, with the first person singular, and uh, you're exhausted. You stagger to the doorway and fall down in the hallway, seeking some kind of relief. You said that in the last nine years, you've been searching for what you really want to do. Yeah. Have you decided? Have you? Did you ever want to start a, a national theater or something like that? There is no... Uh, we have no basis for uh, culture in this country. There is no culture in this country. Why and do you there's, say that? Well, there's almost no culture any place in the world. Uh, who are the last, who are the present great artists, painters, thinkers, philosophers? Uh, where are they? <clears throat> do you realize that in Greece for 150 years we had Sophocles, uh, Plato, uh, why go down the list? But, I mean, couldn't, because it's, couldn't you bring it to the American uh, that's, stage? That's an enormous presumption. 
I mean, if people throw the word artist around, there's no uh, a football. There are no artists. There are only people like you and me who make money. And uh, I didn't accuse you of being an artist. I just asked you if you could bring Shakespeare to the stage for us. Why has there never been a national theater in this country? The closest we had to the national theater was uh, I, Orson Welles, and John Hausman, and the group theater. And they all failed miserably. Has it ever occurred to you that, uh, that you really do have the respect and power and you could bring it to the American scene? No, it has never occurred to me. Why did you not come back to the Broadway stage after Streetcar? <laughs> Let me ask you why you crossed your left leg over your right rather than your right leg over your left. Do you know why? Is it as simple as that? Yeah, it's as simple as that. Why did you reach out and get that fly that was bothering me? Why have you done that twice instead of five times? You don't know. I don't know either. Same answer. I have an answer. Go ahead. That you didn't like the repetition night after night after night, and you were getting bored with it, and that you would have, you wanted to sort of work it's, around it. It's not that I didn't like it. Is that I hated it. <laughs> It was the worst, <laughs> it was the worst experience I ever had in my life. I almost went out of my mind. I'll tell you a funny story. I used to think of myself as a something of a boxer. And I thought it would be terrific. You know, I love the boxing, I love boxing and, and uh, streetcar uh, in New York and the play. And, uh, <clears throat> I would always get people to box with me. And uh, so I had a lot of fun doing that. And then one day, nobody wanted to box. So I went to one of these stagehands, and I asked him, I said, would you mind? I said, why don't we come down and you know, move around a little and work out and box? And this guy was one of the biggest and tall of the roof. I said, I'm not going to hurt you. I swear, I just want something to work out with. I work on my defense. You give me some punches. Broke my nose. You can see the scar here. <laughs> and uh, I was sitting down. No, I was kneeling. I was watching this pool of blood form about eight inches away from my face, just trying to remember what my name was. <laughs> anyway, I had to go to the hospital and have my, because I was, my face was all smashed. And uh, I, after a week, after they put my nose back together, and the swelling went down and the discoloration was almost gone, Irene Selznick, who was the producer, wanted me to, uh, she wanted to come and see me. So I had a friend of mine go down and get some Stein's makeup. And uh, I said, I want some maroon, I want some green, yellow, and got all this stuff. <laughs> made myself up with these terrible eyes, put some tape across my face like this. And uh, she walked in, I said, Irene, I said, when are they gonna let me out of this place? <laughs> she says, you stay right where you are. We'll tell you when you can leave. And I was so pleased. That was one of the high points of my life. I didn't have to work for two weeks. It was awful. Awful to be in a place. So you, you don't like the stage? No. No. It's much tougher than the movies because you have to do it every night. You have to find that emotion. You have to upset yourself. And, uh, you know, it all... In the motion picture, you come in and you save it for the close-up, crank up for that, and then that fly, and uh, so it's much shorter duration. The work is much shorter. I mean, how much more are you gonna 
invade me. I mean, you're like the visiting piranha. <laughs> Whoa, here comes Donnie Trump. <laughs> I just have a few more questions. Fire one. Okay. Oh. You've, um, you've actually lost some weight recently, right? Uh, yeah. I have to lose about 50 pounds. How do you lose weight when you, uh, when you try to lose I dance. Weight? You dance? I dance. Oh, come on. I have, I was a dancer. I would study to be a dancer. Catherine Dunn's wonderful dance school. And I was a drummer. So I played drums. And I danced, put on my afro cuban music and... No, really, how do you lose weight when you have to lose weight? You just reach over and turn it off. And stay out of bed. Don't sit down and keep active and eat fish and uh, vegetables. Do a little bit every day and then uh, week after week and the first thing you know, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like yourself heavy? I don't care.